Hello and welcome to a special edition video brought to you by the National Crowdfunding Association of Canada. Uh, the NCFA is Canada's crowdfunding advocate or crowdfunding hub. Uh, we work closely with industry groups, government, academia and uh, other business affiliates to create a strong and vibrant crowdfunding industry uh, for all of Canada. Uh, my name is Gabe Nasser, I'm an intern here and um, today on this video we're going to be examining a few different successful crowdfunding campaigns that are currently um, open and running. Um, they are very different and they're, different, they're successful for, for much different reasons. Um, the first one is uh, River Blue, which is a documentary and it is a purely cause-based um, campaign. The second one is uh, Leo, which is a, uh, a wearable, a technological wearable for, for working out. And the third one is um, kind of a mixture of, of both of the reason why these t the other two are, are successful. It is a, a uh, community in Burlington, Newfoundland that is being developed and uh, it, it sort of has the double whammy effect of being somewhat cause-based and, and also providing great rewards for the, for the backer. So um, without further ado, we'll jump in and, uh, and examine these. The future will not be fought about oil. The wars of the future is going to be fought about what? Textiles environmentally can be a dirty business. And the fabric dyes used for jeans uh, do contain hazardous materials, things like mercury, cadmium, and lead. And the local industry here has long been accused of releasing its wastewater directly into the Pearl River. So while China's reaped huge economic benefits from the textile industry, uh, that same industry has been a major contributor to its water pollution problem. When I did the initial research into this feature-length documentary, we knew that there was a big problem with blue jeans in the textile manufacturing industry, and that's why we went after this story. So River Blue has a compelling video. Um, the reason it is effective is because they're presenting a problem and they're showing how you can solve this problem or at least acknowledge it. Um, and they, they've already developed a video, they've already developed a documentary, so, so they're using crowdfunding as a means to, to market this documentary and for post-production uh, costs as well. So, the strengths of this campaign um, are, first of all, the compelling pitch video. The, the real advantage that River Blue has over many other campaigns is that they have a great amount of footage to use for this pitch video because of the documentary they've already produced. So they can use that, that valuable, clear, high-definition footage for uh, the pitch video to, to, to get people aware of this problem. The second great strength that River Blue utilizes is their ability to call their crowd to action. So they, they have a call to action, they have a clear way of contributing to the cause, to their, to their cause-based campaign, which is to clean up these rivers that they, they see as a serious pollutant uh, due to the textile manufacturers. So the, the, the real clear way that this has been shown is that the people that have been contributing do not, by and large, take the rewards offered, which means that they are doing it for the pure cause-based reasons, kind of the altruistic effect. The next campaign we're going to look at is uh, a more innovative technological uh, product. It's a it's wearable tech. It's developed for um, people who want to enhance their workouts, and uh, it's called Leo. Meet Leo, the only wearable with true fitness intelligence. Leo sees more than any personal trainer, sensing the signals deep inside your muscles, counting every heartbeat, knowing when you should take a drink or a break. That's because Leo understands your body, using the same equipment as your doctor, but speaking the same language as your friends. That's why Leo is your guide, always watching for signs of oncoming injury, telling you how to avoid it. So Leo has a much different model than River Blue. It's, it's not cause-based, and it is targeted at consumers, uh, specifically you know, consumers that are interested in innovative products and, and have an active lifestyle. Um, as we see here, um, Leo, they've raised, they've doubled their goal. 
Um, and as we kind of scan through here, I mean, what I really love about their, their campaign site is the infographic, all these different statistics and sort of engaging ways that this product enhances your workouts. So it's a really cool product. Um, it's got great uh, options, you know, you can get the, the bands, you can get the, the single band, or um, there's also the, uh, the double band for each leg. So you've got good options. People buy Leo for extrinsic reasons, rather than with River Blue, they're going to fund that for, for more intrinsic reasons. So what are the strengths of Leo's campaign? Well, uh, the product itself is quite marketable. It is innovative. Innovation is always going to be marketable when it fills a niche. Obviously, there's many people that are active and lead active lifestyles. This enhances those people's lifestyles. So there you go. They have a market. The other thing that makes this campaign stand out is the very intuitive and uh, educational infographic that they provided on their campaign site. Um, this has a bunch of different statistics and ways that the product can uh, enhance the, the workout of the individual who's wearing it. And this just makes, you know, it makes, uh, makes it more fun. It makes it more exciting for the, for the user, um, and in this case, the, the consumer. The last campaign uh, that I want to, to examine is... Um, is a campaign that's looking to create a new community in uh, Burlington, Newfoundland, which is a tiny little area. And uh, really, this just speaks to how amazing crowdfunding is. It shows that crowdfunding can reach these tiny areas that otherwise wouldn't be able to get funding for development. This campaign is a bit of a mixture. It's sort of a mixture of the, the two previous ones. It is somewhat cause-based, but it is also targeted at people that are, are looking for a more rewards-based uh, uh, place to put their money. So it'll, it'll have sort of a, a, a double effect where you'll get people donating to cultivate this area, but also getting the reward and the advantage of having a place to vacation for a weekend. The first thing that makes this campaign stand out a little bit is the... Um, different offerings through the perks. So they attract uh, backers through offering these cool little vacation weekends and, and adventures. Secondly, they make it very clear what their cause is, what their goals are. Um, they're cultivating a new community in Burlington, Newfoundland. And this attracts backers because it, it, it shows them how their money can be used to invest in, in new communities and new vacation destinations. The strongest attribute of this campaign is the pitch video. It has a really good pitch guy. He is very personable and very funny and interesting. So we'll take a look at this pitch video because it, it makes the viewer excited to contribute to this campaign. This project started originally as one building and now it's evolved into an entire community project. I would love for this to be an entirely crowdfunded social enterprise where, you know, the money is raised, you get to come here and stay and reap the benefits of what you are creating, essentially, by donating your money. You get to stay in places like, look at that, our prospector tents. How beautiful is that? And did I mention? Yeah, there's an iceberg right out front of your headboard. Are you kidding me? Look at this. You come, you stay here, you wake up, you look outside, there's an iceberg. Then you go to back to bed, and then your bed, which is right there. So there you go. There is three current successful campaigns that are much different than each other, but they have uh, a few common trends. They each have um, a very effective pitch video for different reasons, but each video is very effective. Uh, each one of them uh, are already developed, um, at least uh, in, a, in enough of a way for it to be marketed. Um, it's not like they're in the beginning stages of, of developing these, these causes slash products. Um, and, and also they, they have strong uh, social media presence. So um, these are the, 
there's there's many other uh, strengths, and there's many other campaigns too. And here at the NCFA, where we we are we try to stay agnostic as far as which campaigns are better than any other. This was really just uh, an examination of of three current Canadian campaigns um, that are different, that are that are kind of um, broad ranging uh, to look at and to help uh, our viewers understand what makes them stand out, what makes them have uh, more success than others, and, and these are just uh, some of the reasons why. So anyway, I, I'm glad you joined us today, and uh, I look forward to, to seeing you all in, in the next video and the videos to come. And uh, this is Gabe Nasser on behalf of uh, the National Crowdfunding Association of Canada. Enjoy the rest of your summer.